2020 Tokyo Olympics. Many people made headlines for all the right reasons. But this one athlete, Simone Biles, she made the news for a different yet incredibly inspiring reason. Simone Biles is one of the most talented gymnasts the world has ever seen. She has won so many championships and Olympic medals. When the 2020 Tokyo Olympics rolled around, Simone was under immense pressure. Everyone was expecting her to continue breaking records and bringing home the gold. But as the competition neared, she felt the weight of all that pressure taking a toll on her mental well-being. She tried to push through during the first few events, but she soon realized that something wasn't right. She bravely decided to pull out of the competition, putting her mental health first. Say, um, put mental health first because if you don't, then you're not going to enjoy your sport and you're not going to succeed as much as you want to. So it's okay sometimes to even sit out the big competitions to focus on yourself because it shows how strong of a competitor and person that you really are rather than just battle through it. Her decision to step back it started a worldwide conversation about the importance of mental health in sports and beyond. Simone's choice to prioritize her well-being showed us all that it's okay to take care of our mental health no matter who you are and what you're doing. Simone showed the world that taking care of one's mental health is just as important as our physical well-being. This month, the month of May, is World Mental Health Awareness Month. So in this week's Wisdom Shots, we'll dive into the world of mental health and we'll discuss practical steps to improve our mental well-being. So let's start. So what is mental health? You know, technically, mental health refers to the overall state of our emotional, psychological and social well-being. It's about having a balanced and positive state of mind. It's about managing emotions effectively. It's about maintaining resilience in the face of adversity. And mental health is super important. It can affect how you handle stress, make decisions, your relationships at home and at work. It's not just about not having any mental, uh, mental health problems, you know, th that's mental illness, that's different. Here we're talking about mental well-being. It's about feeling good. It's about facing life's ups and downs with emotional balance. You know, sometimes we all know that life can be tough and it's totally normal to feel stressed. It's normal to feel sad. It's normal to feel overwhelmed. But if these feelings stick around for a long time and if they are making it hard for you and people around you, then we have to take care of our mental health. You know, the topmost mental health issues, like for most people are, number one, stress, anxiety, depression, depression from mild to severe. Another public figure who courageously opened up about mental health is the Bollywood actress Deepika Padukone. Deepika faced her own mental health struggles and she openly shared her story with the world which encouraged others to talk about their own mental health experiences. After having been through what I did, if I could share my story and if anyone in the world heard me and identified with what I went through and could come out of it or understand and, you know, if I could make a difference to at least one life, I felt at that point I'd, you know, all of, you know, going public, speaking about it would be justified. Um, I also felt like the narrative around mental health in India needed to change. Not only did she speak out, but Deepika also founded the Live Love Laugh Foundation, which is dedicated to spreading awareness and providing support for those dealing with mental health issues. According to World Health Organization, WHO, around one in four people will be affected by a mental health disorder at some point in their lives. That's like 25% of the global population. And when it comes to India, the National Mental Health Survey reported that nearly 15% of Indian adults need active interventions for one or more mental health issues. They also found that around 83% of people with mental health issues in India unfortunately did not receive any care or treatment. 
NCRB, National Crime Records Bureau, reported that just last year, there were around 1.64 lakh suicides in India. That is one suicide every four minutes and maximum in the age group between 18 and 30. In the last five years, there were 33 suicide cases in IITs, 24 in NIITs and 4 in IIMs. You know, along with teaching our kids on how to manage missions and how to manage business, it's high time we teach them how to manage their own mind. Now, the NCRB also revealed that mental health issues, including depression, is the number one cause for most of the suicides, maximum suicides in India. So these statistics show that mental health problems are a serious one, serious issue, both globally and in India. So it's crucial to raise awareness, reduce stigma, and improve access to mental health care to address these challenges effectively. There are three things we can do about this. Number one, awareness. Awareness, self-awareness, and educating others, right? Number two, self-care. And the third one is professional help. So we'll start with awareness. Awareness is very important because a lot of people ignore early symptoms like, you know, what's so big deal about it? Everyone go through stress. I mean, this too sh shall pass. You know, th that's the attitude. You know, have you heard of this boiling frog experiment? Researchers found that when they put a frog in a pan of boiling water, the frog, you know, it, it jumps because it's hot. On the other hand, when they put a frog in a normal water, that's room temperature, and when they raise temperature little by little, the frog didn't jump. It was comfortable. And when it became really hot, the frog tried to jump, but it couldn't. It was too late. Eventually, it boiled to death. You know, like they say, slow poison. Mental health issues are like this slow poison. If you're not aware and if, you are, if you're not taking action or seeking any professional support, it can become fatal. So that takes to the second point, which is self-care. So let me talk about some practical steps you can do every day to improve your mental well-being. The number one, movement, physical exercise. Physical activity is super important for our mental health. It releases feel-good chemicals and hormones which can boost our mood and reduce stress. Number two, get enough sleep. Sleep plays a big role in how we feel emotionally. So aim for minimum seven hours of sleep. That's not negotiable. And have a consistent sleep schedule. Very important. Number three is eat a balanced diet and cut down junk food. You are what you eat. It affects your mental health. So eating a variety of fruits, nuts, veggies, whole grains and lean proteins can help you to feel good. Number four, stay connected. Very important again. Social connections are very important for mental well-being. So keep in touch with your friends, family members and don't be afraid to reach out when you need any support. Number five, practice mindfulness or any mind work like meditation, deep breathing exercises, yoga, anything which help you to stay in the present moment and which help you to manage stress. That realistic goals. Don't take too much into your plate. You know, break your goals into sm smaller achievable steps. This can help you feel more in control and less overwhelmed. Number seven, again, very important, limit your screen time. Spending too much time on your phone, laptop or watching TV can impact your mental well-being. So set limits and take breaks to engage in other activities. Number eight, express yourself. Find creative outlets to express your emotions like writing, journaling, painting or playing music. This can help you to process your feelings and boost your mood. Remember, everyone's mental health needs are different. It's all about finding what works best for you and incorporating these habits into your daily routine. Next, if you feel that you know, I'm not able to handle this. If it's too much, seek professional support. Thankfully, there are many people and organizations, you know, now who are there to support us. For example, if you go to Leave Love, Love Foundation, you will see a lot of resources and helpline numbers. You can reach out for help. All right, so let's wrap up. So taking care of our mind is just as important as taking care of our body. So like the inspiring story of Simone Biles and Deepika Padukone, we should always prioritize our mental well-being and never be afraid to seek help or support when we need it. Always be kind to ourselves on this journey. Be kind. I would also love to hear your mental health tips or experiences in the comments below. So let's keep the conversation going and support each other along the way. 
Thank you so much for watching. I am Srijit Krishnan. Stay positive, stay happy, stay healthy.